Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Joining me today is the co-founder and co-CEO of Home Thrive, Dave Jacobs. Dave, how are you today? Great, Jared. Thanks. It's great to be with you. Great to be with you. You and I saw each other at the Vive conference in Nashville a few weeks back. It was great to to connect in person and now we're doing a podcast. Love it. Great. You too. <laughs> uh, let's, let's dive right in. Tell us a little bit about your background and then we'll talk about Home Thrive. Yeah, the probably most relevant background is I was a senior executive at a healthcare company. I ran the post-acute business, which is everything outside of the hospital. And uh, nevertheless, when my dad got really sick really quickly and he wanted to be at home uh, with my mom in Connecticut, um, it was incredibly difficult. My brother and I live in Chicago. And I would have thought with my background, knowing a lot about nursing homes, home health, hospice um, products and things of that nature, we have a close family the means to support my parents, I would have thought we'd be able to kind of navigate our way through it. And I could not have been more wrong. It was incredibly difficult, challenging, stressful. I gained 20 pounds in six weeks. My wife even suggested at one point I take a leave of absence from my career, which I never would have thought about. And as we got through this process, I thought to myself, there had to be a better way. And what does everybody else do? I'm fortunate to have certain advantages. What does everybody else do who doesn't have some of those advantages? And saw a tremendous need. And I have a co-founder and best friend named Dave Greenberg, and he had a similar experience. So we left our cushy corporate jobs to start Home Thrive to really um, provide kind of support expertise uh, for family caregivers to help reduce that work, worry, and stress that comes with that experience. Now, give us give us the uh, the current status of the company, where things are at today, how, how things are structured. Um, I know, you know, you were pretty, you were pretty excited when we were chatting at Vive, yeah. right, about where the company's at today. But uh, give our audience, like, I guess, um, that additional broad overview of the company and where things are at. Sure. Just if, if I could, I'll explain kind of the need for this a little bit. People, you know, may not realize there's um, 53 million uh, unpaid family caregivers are out there. One in five employees are going through this. They're spending 20 hours a week doing all kinds of stuff for their parents. Um other aging loved ones, family members with special needs, one in three will leave their job. So it's a huge issue and most people suffer in silence. And so we've been working for the last four years to evangelize the need for the category and to build our business and our services, um, both for um, employees. So we sell to employers on behalf of their employees. And then increasingly we are getting into health plans who recognize that the family caregiver is a force multiplier to get a lot of the outcomes um, that they want with their members. So we have been in the process of really building the employer business, and we have a little over 100 national employers, and we have um, now seven national payers who are kind of using us for family caregiver support to be able to reduce, you know, hospitalization, ED visits, um, close care gaps, um, increase retention, things of that nature. And in doing all of this, right, you're you're really creating a, a category of caregiving coordination, right, for these unpaid uh, family caregivers. Talk us through, uh, you know, how you're doing that. I know you said you've you've you're building the right partnerships. You're working with employers, right? You're working mm -hmm. with payers, uh, but but talk us through, you know, how how that's continued to evolve. Because um, I think it's always something, you know, whether it's uh, anyone listening or someone they know, right? Everyone has dealt with a caregiver yep. in some capacity. So uh, talk us through that a little more. Yeah, it's interesting because when you go to employers, most of the people in kind of HR leadership are at an age where they're in that sandwich generation. So they've either had experience or going through experience being a family caregiver. And so they understand it, but they don't have budget for it. So we have to help them understand the need within their organization, how it can help their organization, especially this time where uh, people are looking a little more carefully at some of the financial investments that they're making. Um, how it provides a really strong return on investment. So well, it really could apply to any employer that's out there. We focus on ones that have specific and deep needs around retention and productivity, health systems, hospital systems being one of the large ones, professional service firms is another big one, and then technology companies, um, where they, they see the need for productivity and losing people is so incredibly difficult. You probably know this, but hospital systems turnover is about 25%. It's causing them to shut down wings, um, delay procedures, things of that nature. So we're doing a lot to educate them and help provide kind of the support and program, but also the justification within the organization so they embrace it. On the health plan side, we've gone and said, you know, they have tremendous resources for the member themselves. Care management does a great job there, but nobody can provide support for the family caregiver at scale. 
And we're, we've developed a way to be able to do that, that really large organizations in long-term care insurance, Medicare Advantage, um, and Medicare Supplement have been able to embrace. Let's talk through some of the outcomes too, right? Because it's hand in hand. Whenever someone yeah. mentions payers, the word outcomes uh, yeah. shortly follows. So what are some of these outcomes you're seeing um, you know, in the payer space? Is, are you seeing improved health? Like, Talk us through those. Yeah, we so there's I would put them into two categories. We're seeing um, improved results for the family caregivers, which is important because it's what enables us to be able to improve results of the members. So we're saving two full days a month for the family caregivers. Um, we're able to reduce their stress by about 90 percent. Um, and then we're also able to allow them to stay in their job, um, basically been able to re reduce the intent to resign by 80 percent. So that's really important. So it keeps them coming back and working with us. But what it's translating into for the members is that we are seeing about a 75 percent reduction in care gaps. When we are kind of working with a family and working with a family caregiver, we're assigned, we understand what those gaps are. It could be annual wellness visits, mammograms. It could be compliance with their disease management program. We've been able to reduce those gaps and get people to be more compliant by working with a family caregiver. So that's really significant. Um, we're also doing a lot to improve retention for health plans. They've seen a 25% increase in retention. And it's not surprising because family members are involved in almost two thirds of the decision about what health plan a loved one's gonna use. So by working with a family member and supporting them, we've been able to imp increase retention as well, which are both very important that along with the care gaps to a health plan. And in terms of, you know, there's a lot happening, right? You guys, yeah. congrats on all the progress too. Uh, but like what what's next that's continuing to excite you? I mean, if, if you had to just focus in on a couple yeah. of things, I know there's a lot of stuff that's exciting you about the yeah. business. I would say I put it. There's two things. One is continuing to be part of the growth of the category and a leader in that area. We really think that if you look, the analogy that probably makes the most sense is mental health. Seven or eight years ago, mental health was not a benefit that health plans or employers offered broadly. Now, uh, almost every health plan offers it, and about 85% of employers do. We see. We think that family caregiver support is going to look a lot like that. So we're very involved in helping people understand the need for it and being one of the one, leading ones to offer it. But in, the other important part is, is we think about technology and its role in this. This is very much of a tech enabled service. People are at the heart of what we do, but finding a way to take the magic of social workers that we have who are our employees and being able to use technology to kind of bring that magic to family caregivers at scale is something we're very excited about and making a lot of progress in. And it's helping us increase utilization of the program tremendously because the way we look at things, we can do a great job with individual families, but if we only do that with a small number, we haven't helped that many people. We want to be able to do that and do it at scale at a price point that payers especially can make work within their supplemental benefit framework. So we're excited to use technology to supplement the kind of the high touch component that we've always had. What challenges would you say still exist in, you know, continuing to, obviously they're if there weren't any challenges, right, right. everyone would do it. Yep. Um, but what challenges still exist that, that you see that, you know, you're trying to continue to move past? Um, and, and challenges, right, can be can be regulatory. Yep. Uh, they can be ones that you can really move past eventually, but would be really curious in learning more about that. It's a good question. And there, there's a number of areas. I think one is continuing to educate people and getting kind of to be able to cross that chasm and get the adoption to kind of um, really explode. That's one challenge that we have. Another one is within the payer world, especially, is how do you get to the family caregivers? Because, you know, a payer generally doesn't know who those people are. They're insuring their members and they don't necessarily and there's no reason they'd have the family caregivers. So we've had to get very good at being able to work with the members to identify and to reach the family caregiver and then to get them enrolled and realize that this is something that's going to be helpful for them and helpful. For them. So that continues to be something we work very hard um, to get better at, to improve, but it's a challenge, especially in Medicaid populations where it's a little tougher to identify these people and to reach those people. Um, so we continue to work on that. And the other part is the technology, which is to do our best to be able to take so many of the great things that happen with the social workers and put it in the palm of somebody's hands. We've made a lot of progress, but it's kind of an ongoing progress. You know, we want to be able to replicate as much of that as possible and let the social workers kind of be there for the highest, most intense, challenging situations. Well, I'm really excited for you, Dave. You have you have the the, the cool company name, brand, the right team, uh, and the energy, and uh, you're 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 solving you know such a big problem that is only going to continue to grow. 
so I, I really wish you and, and the team the best of luck in what you're building. And then hopefully we can have you come back on again in the near future, dive into a panel, talk about some other issues as well. But really appreciate you coming on the show today. No, this is great, Jared. And kudos to you for recognizing kind of the need in general out there and, and helping more people kind of understand and appreciate it. We've, we've, we've all been through it. Many of us have been through it. If they haven't, they're, we're going to. And uh, we, something that we really think needs to be addressed and be able to do it for a large number of people. So I really appreciate your interest and kind of really good questions. Absolutely. This was fun. 